Um, we are going to take a very, very quick look at the Innistrad teases. Um, mostly because there's not a whole lot to look at right now. Innistrad is still a month and a bit out. Um, so we aren't going to have a very in-depth look. There will be a stream on the 26th, I believe, of August, which will be the full sneak peek. Um, and that will be hosted by Magic. We might do a co-stream. We might not. We'll find out. So Innistrad is the realm in Magic that is gothic horror. We're returning to Innistrad after a few years away. Apparently. Again, I'm... Um... I've only recently returned to magic as something that I'm very passionate and obsessed with. So Innistrad is the gothic horror realm. And this year, this fall, we are getting two, two Innistrad sets. The first one is Innistrad Midnight Hunt, which is going to focus on van or werewolves. And then the second one, so Innistrad Midnight Hunt, the werewolf set, is coming out in September. And then the second one, Innistrad Crimson Vow, is coming out in November. And Innistrad Crimson Vow is focusing on vampires. So we get some werewolves, we get some vampires, all gothic horror. It's going to be great. So here's some concept art that they shared. Uh, a little spooky pumpkin patch with some dead looking trees in the background, a little um, scarecrow there. This is general, general Halloween-y goodness, and I'm, I'm here for it. Um, and then we've got a few cards that they did some previews on. So the first preview card is Infernal Grasp, which is a black, one and a black for an, an instant. And you destroy target creature, but you lose two life. So it's a fairly, fairly good trade-off, fairly standard trade-off for black as well. Um, the second card that they previewed is Play With Fire, is one red for an instant. Play With Fire deals two damage to any target. If a player is dealt damage this way, you can scry one. And f for those that don't know, scrying is when you look at the top of your, the top card of your deck, and you can decide whether to put it at the bottom of your deck or leave it at the top of your deck. So if you were to scry one, you take one card off the top of your deck, look at it, if you want to keep it, you put it back on the top of your deck. If you want, if you don't want it, say it's something you can't use or something that you don't want right now, you can choose to put it at the bottom of your deck. So choose to put it at, keep it at the top or put it at the bottom. That's what scrying means. The next card that they previewed is called Champion of the Perished. One black for a zombie creature, one, one. Whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on Champion of the Perished. So this is very good for zombie decks. Because zombie decks have a lot of low co cost creatures. And so you're casting a ton of creatures all the time. From your graveyard, from your hand, from your library, from anywhere. Because it's black. Um... So you're going to be playing a lot of zombies. Champion of the Perished will get very buff very quickly if you're playing your zombie deck properly. Very, very cool card. Um, some more information, blah, 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 about the Innistrad realm. Uh, the next card that they previewed is called Join the Dance. This is the last card that they previewed. And it is a green and a white for a sorcery where you create two 1-1 one, one creature tokens. And this has flashback. And flashback is a returning uh, returning mechanic to magic. And flashback means that you may cast this card again from your graveyard. So when you play a sorcery, um, it resolves in the field of play. And then once it's resolved, you put it in your graveyard because you've used that card. Flashback lets you pay extra. So this is three mana a green mana and a white mana so five mana total and you get to play that again from your graveyard but you can only do this once because once you do a flashback you can't put that card back into your graveyard you exile it which means it's no longer in the game so it's very dead instead of just being dead 
very dead. And flashback is an old mechanic that a lot of people really love. And this tease let us know that uh, there's going to be a lot of flashback mechanics coming in the Innistrad sets this fall. And that was it for the Midnight Hunt um, teases. Some pretty interesting cards. I really like um, some of the standard stuff they're doing. You know, deal two damage, scry one, deal, kill a creature, lose two life. Um, constant buffing of a zombie to a creature, which is really great for zombie decks. Um, and then introducing, reintroducing us to the flashback mechanic. This has very, very midsummer vibes. I'm very scared of any guy in a bear costume in a barn on fire or a lady dressed in flower regalia. Um, there was a tiny bit of a tease of the Crimson Vow set, which is coming in November, the set that's focused on vampires. They kind of teased us with um, some, of the, some of the aesthetics, some of the um, product pictures. Um, so the showcase, the magic showcase, is going to be on the 24th of August at 8 a.m. Pacific time. The 24th is a Tuesday. Oh my god, a Tuesday? Really? Okay, so hopefully we'll be able to co-stream that and we can chat along as they announce things and showcase. Usually these summer showcases show us everything or give us a glimpse into everything that's coming for the rest of the year. So until Christmas time or there has been a couple of them that go the full year. So all the way until next summer. So we might find out what's coming in the spring of 2022. We might not. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to co-stream that and hang out and chat about all the stuff that they reveal. So there's some new, so some general stuff about the new Innistrad sets. This is what the icon for Midnight Hunt looks like. Uh, you can't see my cursor. There it is. This is what the icon for the Midnight Hunt looks like. This is some of the promo art. Apparently this werewolf creature is a notable magic character which i do not know um but apparently it's exciting i'm gonna save that real quick um yeah some hashtags to use on social the website we can go take a look at that um here's the magic arena and magic online releases which is september 16th and the pre-release week in Paper Magic in real life will be September 17th. And then the release date will be the 24th. So with the D&D &D set, they did almost a month early preview on Arena. Um, or at least a few weeks. And this time they're only doing one week. So I guess we'll see when that's how that goes. What, which trend they decide to stick with for future releases. Um, they gave us a little sneak peek at the product lineup, which has set boosters, draft boosters, um, a bundle up here in the background. There's these collector's boosters with this amazing purple and green art to it. And then sneakily in the back here, you can see two commander decks. So instead of doing four commander decks, like they have been doing, um, in previous sets, they're doing two for each of these. Um, apparently the commander decks will be called Undead Unleashed, so probably a lot of zombies, and then Coven Counters. So it'll be probably a blue-black deck with witches and control cards. Um, so that's really cool. They didn't actually reveal those two names in the stream, but they're here on the website, so it's very interesting. Here's just a closer look at the products. Blah, blah, blah. This box set, the bundles, which I really like to get, are um, look pretty cool. The box is kind of meh. This art, is, this art is interesting, but we'll see. Um, oh, actually, there was some more cards that they revealed. So, Triskai Decophile. Tris, Triskai Dec... De, Triskai Decophile is a one and a blue creature human wizard one and one three power toughness 
and it gives you no maximum hand size. However, in addition to that, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have exactly 13 cards in your hand, you win the game, and you can pay three and a blue to draw a card. So you have no maximum hand size, you can pay to draw cards, and if you have exactly 13 at the beginning of the of your upkeep, you win. Just period, flat out. So that's really cool. Uh, they revealed some of the art for the basic lands, uh, which is also really cool. I think I like the planes the best with that pumpkin patch on it. Looks pretty cool. Everything else is... I mean, mountains aren't generally spooky, but forests, swamps, they can have spook to them. Islands, a little spooky. Um, and then they give out some information and product information about the Innistrad Crimson Vow set coming in November. Again, you can see two more commander decks here. So in total, the Innistrad set is going to have four commander decks. They're just coming out at two different times. So if you want all four, you have to wait. If you want one of them, you might have to wait to see what all four of them are. So the two names of the commander decks in Crimson Val are Spirit Squadron. So probably a lot of undead uh, ghosts, spirits, lots of tokens probably. And then Vampiric Bloodlines. So Crimson Val is centered around vampires, uh, that gothic horror theme. So the Vampiric Bloodline is probably going to have this guy as its commander, maybe. Um, and there's going to be a lot of lifesteal, a lot of flying creatures. Um, we'll have to wait and find out. And then that's it. Wait, there's one more thing I want to show. <clears throat> I know I posted it on Twitter, so I will go to my Twitter and find it. It's these right here. The, the last thing they revealed is these new black and white land cards, the full art land cards in black and white and they might be my favorite magic cards ever made these are gorgeous i want a full playset of all of these in all of my decks i never want to use a different land ever these are stunning the art is amazing um they're very gothic i would i would definitely have a full set of these framed next to my DD player's guide module lands and my bob ross cards these are absolutely gorgeous and i got very excited when they announced them and then so they've got some extended arts some extended borders and then the other the final card that they revealed was ren and seven who is a legendary planeswalker in green who costs three green green to cast and they have five loyalty standard the borderless um treatment is really cool the art is really awesome it's basically a a forest spirit who has built this like weird crazy tree armor mech suit type thing apparently ren and six is an old card and so now they're redoing ren and it's ren and seven instead of ren and six because this is the seventh iteration of their forest armor thing so I'll quickly run down their abilities uh, plus one reveal the top four cards of your library put all land cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest into your graveyard which is really cool if you want to ramp this is this is going to be a dope simic ramp card um you want to get all the mana in your hand as fast as possible their zero ability is put any number of land cards from your hand onto the battlefield. So once you've collected all those lands, you can zero out, do the zero ability and play all of them onto the battlefield tapped so that your next turn, you've got access to all this new mana. Their minus three ability is create a green tree folk, tree folk creature token with reach and this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. So once you've done the plus one and gather a bunch of land, you do the zero ability and play all the land. And then you do the minus three ability and create a tree folk that's 10, 10 or eight, eight or however many lands you control, which is now a lot higher thanks to the other two abilities you've done before this. His, uh, his, I know, their 
their ultimate ability, which is a minus eight, so you got to do the land thing a few times, is return all permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand, and you get an emblem with you knew you have no maximum hand size. So because they start at five loyalty, you have to do plus one at least three times to do this, to get to eight. And every time you do the plus one, you put, you can put up to four cards in your graveyard from your library. So you take the four cards from the top of your library, whichever ones aren't land, you have to put into your graveyard. And then once you get to eight loyalty and you do their ultimate ability, the minus eight, you take all of the permanent cards from your graveyard and put them into your hand. This is bonkers. This, this has the ability to pop off and completely change the game. Ren and Seven, super cool. I really dig this card. And that is pretty much it for all of the things that they have revealed um, for the upcoming Innistrad Midnight Hunt in September and Innistrad Crimson Vow, which they've only teased just a little bit um, here in August, which is quite early. Again, there's a stream on the 24th where they will most likely be revealing quite a bit more and we will hopefully see you then and i will be right back in just a few seconds i'm just gonna switch over to the brb screen so i can cut this out and put it on youtube booyah Long time no see. Uh, I guess we should maybe play some magic. <laughs> <laughs> 